first I will load the components uh, I select first the part called uh, contact I load this component in Inventive uh, and I uh, apply a fixed point and fixed angle on its uh, main axis just for information, I will open this component so that everyone can see how it's modeled. We have uh, some uh, two dimensions here, uh, one called contact point and one called spread, uh, which are used to model the deformation of the component. So if I increase spread, you see that uh, the, the opening is deforming. Um, and uh, this part have been, has been parameterized so that uh, it can model the, the opening deformation behavior of the um, of this uh, component. Okay, so now I close this component and I go back in the assembly. Um, I'm going to load the second component, which is the insertion pin, um, as we can find, for example, in a connector. So this component is named pin. I will change its color. So I select the component and change the color. And then I will model the insertion uh, movement of the pin in the uh, contactor, saying first the main axis of the pin has to be parallel to the main axis of the contact part. Second, we are going to create a polycurve around the pin. So we create a polycurve involving all the external geometry of the pin. Third, we are going to create the tangency between the upper side of the contactor and the pin. And as you can see, when I have done all that, I am remaining with one degree of freedom that I am going to lock with a dimension going from the center of the arc and of the pin to the bottom of the contactor. So now we have put in contact the pin with the contact. And uh, if we move the, the pin, we see uh, it can move along the tangency, but at the moment the contact uh, component is not deforming according to the movement of the pin. So to, now I'm going to uh, model this uh, deformation. To model this deformation, we need to define two additional dimensions that will drive the internal di dimensions of the contact part. So I'm going first to create a segment between the tangency point and the bottom uh, profile of, the, of the, um, the pin. I'm going to say that this segment has to be perpendicular to the main axis of the contact part. I'm going to measure its length and also going to measure the distance from this segment to the bottom of the contactor, from this point to this line. So we have to be careful to use a, a point to line dimension and not a line to line dimension. Next, we rename those dimensions. Uh, this one will be named uh, S, like spread, and this one will be named, named CP, like contact point. And those dimensions will be linked from the assembly to the component contact. So I activate here the connections. I clear, click here um, next to S, so that I link S to the component contact and to the dimension called spread. So I validate, and then I will select uh, the dimension CP, and I will say I want to connect the dimension CP to the uh, component contact and the dimension called contact point in this component. So when I have done that, the opening of the contact uh, actually updates and adapts to the, to the thickness uh, at the tangency point. So now if we move the contact, the pin, we see that the blue uh, contact part is deforming according to the movement. So now that we have done that, what we want to also add in this model is uh, um, force calculation. Uh, if this was a, a pin belonging to a connector, we would like to know how much force needs to be applied on the pin in order to actually insert it in the contact part. So to make this calculation, we are going to model first the um, 
moment of flexion uh, applied on the side of the contact part here in this uh, in this um, uh, in this section. So I'm going to model just a segment going from here to here, and uh, I'm going to say on this segment we want to create a midpoint, and then we are going to model uh, a moment centered at this point which will be opposite to the opening deformation of the contact part. So I will call it, uh, for example, MF, like a moment of flexion. Then we may also uh, define uh, the linear or non-linear variation of this moment according to the uh, opening angle of the, of the contactor. So we may say, for example, this angle will measure the deformation of the side of the contact. I'm going to call this angle of deformation AD. Um, and then here I will model a, just a linear um, deformation. Of course, we could use a curve coming from Excel, but to, to keep it simple here, I enter just a linear deformation with a stiffness K. I'm going to say K is going to be uh, 10 newtons per millimeters per degrees. And then we are going to have uh, the initial value of the angle of deformation, AD0, will say that uh, it is uh, 0 degrees. So using this, we can unlock now uh, the moment of flexion, MF, and say MF is equal to K multiplied by uh, AD, the current angle of deformation, minus the initial angle of deformation. We validate, and now the angle of deformation is uh, calculated. So now it's possible to um, model at the point of contact uh, the force and the friction that gets applied by the pin on the uh, contact part. So I can say I will have a force here. Um, this force will be perpendicular to the poly curve. This force will be applied at the point of tangency, so I use the point on object. Then I'm creating a friction. So the friction applied by the connector pin on the contact part has to be opposite to the force I just created, so it will be in this direction. Then I unlock the normal force, so I have one degree of freedom. And I am going to say that the sum of moments applied to the upper part of the contact should be equal to zero at the center of deformation of the of the profile. So the system has calculated the force. Then I'm going to focus now on calculating uh, the uh, insertion force that needs to be applied on the on the pin. So first I'm going to model at the contact point here uh, a force that is equal and opposite to the normal force and uh, a force that will be also equal and opposite to the friction force. So I'm going to say this is an equal and opposite to this. Okay, so then, uh, based on that, we want to know uh, how much force needs to be applied um, in this point horizontally in order to insert the pin. So first I'm going to say, here I will create the resulting force of the normal force plus friction force. And from that, I'm going to compute the x and y uh, component of the force. So I delete the y component because I don't need it. And I just take the x component. So this is uh, the x component of the insertion force on one side of the system. And uh, now I'm going to create here uh, also a force that will be our insertion force and I'm going to say this force should be parallel to the axis of the pin um, I will unlock it and say it's called uh, insertion uh, force and now in an equation uh, we can say that uh, insertion force will be equal to uh, minus 2 times x because uh, the system is symmetric so 
the lower force is the same as the upper force. Validate that. So we get in this position uh, uh, insertion force of 0 0.78. Um, of course, it's possible to change the position of the uh, contact part. So at every step, the system uh, updates the uh, insertion force. So we see that uh, in the system, actually, when we insert, uh, we start with an insertion force uh, on the flat um, side, which is equal to the two times the friction. So it's a constant. Then the insertion force will increase until 0 0.9596. And then it starts decreasing again. Okay, so we may come close to the uh, maximum force, which is around here, and uh, analyze actually the uh, insertion um, insertion force in this way. So if we can get close to the maximum force using the solver of Excel. Uh, it's possible to analyze what will be the maximum statistical force that we will get. Uh, it seems here if we have uh, large tolerances, the, uh, the variations are going to be uh, quite big. But it allows to uh, know what are the main drivers of uh, the variation of the insertion force. So the, um, the heights of the uh, side of the contact part, uh, the thickness of the material of the contact part, um, the thickness of the of the pin, of course, will have an, an impact. Uh, any dimensions, and uh, of course, we can find also the physical contributors that are the stiffness of the contact part and the initial angle of the contact part. And using uh, this, it's possible also to. Um, make a plot of the curve in function of the angle. So if I start here at, let's say, 6 uh, millimeters, um, I'm going to say this is uh, uh, displacement of the pin. I'm going to create a new group called curve. Uh, I'm going to place in this group the um, displacement the insertion force and then we can do a tolerance in motion study for the two variables that I just placed in the group curve for the displacement I will record only the nominal and for the insertion force I will record the nominal uh, the upper worst case and the plus three sigma ok so I start the recording and now if we can do a step by step change of the displacement from 6 to 9, let's say, and we will use steps of uh, 0 0.2. So at every step, the system um, updates the movement of the, the pin, recalculates all the forces, and does a tolerance analysis on the insertion force. So now, um, based on the data that we get, well, we see that at some point, the system is actually going to um, to reverse. If I select the data here that we have until uh, that point, uh, yeah, well, we see here we get to 8.6. Um, then I say insert a curve. So um, I select the, the data. Um, I'm going to select the, the data for the horizontal axis. So um, now we get in Excel a curve that represents um, uh, in, uh, in blue the nomi nominal insertion force, in red the plus 3 sigma insertion force, and in green the uh, worst case insertion force. So normally the, the test curves that we get from laboratory will always be included in, in below the, the green curve. And uh, here we have a lot of variation between the nominal and the worst case because the tolerances are quite large. So with, with tighter tolerances, we would have uh, less variations. <laughs>